What a great first live stream from Weathering Waves, in my opinion. I'm going to be 100% honest with y'all. I went into this thinking that it was going to be pretty bad. Like, I, I was like, there's no way they're going to announce the release date right now because that would be almost career suicide. But I was I was wrong. I was absolutely wrong. This was a great first live stream. And today we're going to be talking about a few key points, like some of the developer notes that they talked about. And we're going to search through them and kind of see what they talked about and give you my opinions on it. And then we're going to also talk about the release date and the pre-registration bonuses. But before we get into that, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button down below and hit that notification bell to be notified of when the next Weathering Waves video comes out. And of course, leave a comment if you are excited for Weathering Waves. And don't forget to check out my sponsor, the ever wonderful, ever awesome Gamer Subs. Make sure to use code Tystra right there for 10% off. And the link is down in the description. Make sure to get yourself, honestly, one of my favorite flavors, Blowhole Blast by Shy Lily. I've done a couple of shorts on the flavor ranging from grading the flavor itself to now carbonating the flavor. So if you like it, make sure to check it out. But without any further delay, let's go ahead and dive into it. Now, these developer notes, some of them were talked about like during the stream. So I want it to be abundantly clear. The reason why I have this pulled up is because some of this with evidence of being shown was talked about. So let's go ahead and dive in. In the combat section, the biggest thing I want to talk about is actually the e or gameplay is the ecosystem. Now, they showed off a bunch of improvements. Now, first things first, in the Echo system, they showed the recycling system that's going to be for Echoes. So let's say you have five green level Echoes, right? And you don't want them. You could turn them in and possibly get a purple Echo of a monster that you've already gotten. Now, in some cases, it's already a monster you've already gotten. So it's like, uh, whatever. But what I will say is that it changes, obviously, you know, the abilities and such. And these echoes are going to work like artifacts. So it's really good. Not only that, but I noticed that when they turned in five greens at one time or four, it's either four or five. I can't ex exactly remember. But when they turn those in, it turned into a purple which means that it went up to upgrades from green to blue to purple. And that's really, really cool because the fact that you can get higher level uh, equipment just from that is pretty dang cool, right? Not only that, but they actually showed or talked about the shiny echoes that you could get. And people were like, well, if I want to farm shiny echoes, if I get a bad like ability from it, then it's kind of, you know, it's kind of dookie. But what turns out to be the case is actually they're going to make it to where the shiny part of it is a skin that you could apply to any of the echoes of that same monster. So if let's say you get a shiny echo, but its main stat is defense and you don't want that, you could find an echo of the same monster breed, not shiny, and then apply the shiny to it. I think that's awesome because it literally makes it like to where you don't have to sit there farming all day. A lot of people have been ragging on the ecosystem, but I think the concept is really, really good. And with these new improvements to not only cos uh, uh, cosmetic, but also the overall gameplay of it, it makes it a lot easier. They also made it to where I believe the frequency of echoes is a lot higher. So we will see a lot more echoes. Now, as we scroll down here, they talked about story cutscenes and animations. One of the biggest things to come out from this is the lip movements not matching the character and some of the translations not being as good, followed by some of the animation camera angles were not up to par. Well, they showed evidence of this actually being a lot better. And I got to give them credit because where how you place a camera in a scene makes the scene even better. Not only that, but you have to make sure that the words that are coming out of the character's mouth in at least the base language that it's in, which is Chinese, should match the lips of the character. And they did really, really well with fixing that. They showed it off a little bit. They actually showed the dynamics between like uh, like softer spoken words to like, you know, pungent or like enunciated words and you could actually see the lips kind of move now granted it is in the anime style so it's more like you know like that but you know the fact is is that there's there's subtle changes to the animation that makes a lot of sense and again the story cutscenes have better like visual interpretation um of what is going on in the actual picture so i really really dig that as well and that's like a cosmetic change. But again, you're going for flash and style. 
and gameplay. So you, if you're going to choose those three, those are the three you got to pick up on. Speaking of flash and style, there is another, well, not really speaking of flash and style, there is another thing that wasn't kind of touched up in, I believe, this part. Um, but they did talk about sound effects. And I will say, like, I didn't really catch on to this at first, but there are times in the closed beta 2 when I was playing that sound was just cut off completely. And I turn off music normally for the games just because I like listening to my own music. And it's not to say I don't like the music of the games. It's just sometimes there's a time and a place. And sometimes I'm just like, I'm here to grind. Let's get the grind going. I need my grind music. But what's really cool about some of these sound effects that were in the game or that are in the game, they were fixed and they match better with what is going on. They showed one with Gian, um, where his spear wasn't like making noise as he was flying through the air. And then it actually like showed the better sound quality with it that made sense to what he was doing. They showed a lot of different skill animations that had better sound. Um, even when you were doing the uh, uh, Ghost Rider character thing, there was no sound with it before. Now there's sound. And I think that that shows that they could they could understand like minor things where it's like, OK, this would kind of take out the immersion. And I think ultimately that's what they wanted to focus on was like immersion and gameplay, which they did a fantastic job in the stream showcasing everything that they were changing. And that's the thing. All these changes that they made, they showed that that's what they did. They actually showed examples of it, of what they fixed so far without spoiling everything. And the story is a little bit more like easier to understand from what they said. It looks like it's more like actual, not linear, but you know what you're doing and you know where you're going from place to place. So that makes sense. Now, those were the main things I wanted to talk about, but let's go ahead and talk about the release date being May 22nd of 2024. I'm so happy about this because like, I thought at first it was May 23rd, but it is going to be May 22nd. And if you looked at the Epic Games screenshots that came out before, they were saying May 30th. Now, if I saw May 22nd and I didn't see the changes in the live stream, I'd be highly skeptical. I'd be like, hey, maybe this isn't the way to go. Maybe we should calm down with this, right? However, when they showed all the stuff that they changed and then they announced it, I became hyped. I became hyped with the fact that they're releasing it on the 22nd. I really, really hope that this does extremely well, and I'm going to be covering it myself, so I'm pretty excited. Um, but there is also pre-registration awards. We already got 5 million, which was the shell credits of 80,000. We got the 10 million advanced uh, res uh, resonance potions uh, by 10. Astrocyte, uh, we got 200 of those for 15 million. At 200, we get the sigil in route. And then at 30 million, uh, we get the Lustrious Tides, which are summons. And I believe at 50 million, we also get uh, a weapon pack of some sort. It might be one weapon. It might be all five types, but who knows? I really want to get to 50 million. We're at 15 right now. And this has only been what, as of this recording, two days after the live stream, they've almost, well, actually more than doubled their amount of pre-registrations from this live stream alone. And I'm very, very excited for that. So was this stream a success? I would absolutely say yes, it is. And I think that honestly, I'm very excited for how Weathering Waves is taking the initiative to listen to their player base and understand what we want. And that I think is something that a lot of other companies should take from or take away from. They should take this talking to your players and understanding what their issues are. I'm totally not like saying this to one specific company in regards to one specific of their games. Totally not. Not their direct competitor. But I digress. I think a lot of companies or gotcha companies could learn a thing or two from Shift Up and Kuro games. They're doing it right. And I'm very excited for Weathering Waves. So let me know in the comments down below. Are you excited for Weathering Waves? Definitely want to hear y'all's opinions. And don't forget to check out Gamer Subs. Use code Tyser for 10% off. Link is in the description. And of course, that's going to be it. Love y'all to death. And as always, we will catch you in the next video. Please take care and be safe.